Like, so I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm kind of at a loss to explain what drove me. I mean, when I, when I, you know, look at, try to look at myself from an outside perspective, it just looks, yeah, it looks kind of insane. Like what, what is this person doing and what are they going for? I don't know. But it was it's really, really I mean, you mostly, know, it's, it's mo mostly just for the experience. It's like, let's see what this is all about, you know. But it kind of worked out for you. I mean, it could have been a different story with that, uh, you know, with Batabi Joyce and the uh, the adjustments, right? I mean, I think he, what was it? You know, was it your back again that, that was that was that was bad? Or uh, tell tell me that story again when you know with the certain <laughs> was it a certain, a certain adjustment? I remember he was giving you that really really well, seemed you to know, kind of uh, I mean, compromise just, you, but just, then seemed to just work like, out. Like you know, coming you from coming from we don't the have West, many success stories is, there. First of all, we have such a like a a extreme attachment to our material and physical selves, you know, I mean, that's just Western kind of consciousness, but also, you know, this kind of, um, also coming from a litigious society, you know, where people are in the habit of suing, you know, each other based on like, you caused me harm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to go to India and to see like, there's like you're no never going to get any suing there. There, there, <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any concern whatsoever about like the possibility of injury or you know it's it almost seemed like you know in that at that time in that class it looked like at in many moments like he was actually trying to injure people or at least didn't have any concern whatsoever about their well being in that sense you know it's like. And and the whole attitude was always like, yes, no worries. You know, pain is coming, pain is going. <laughs> Don't worry. One more week, pain all over. Pain is all over. Like what? What? Is, what does that mean? <laughs> like pain is all over. <laughs> like does that mean I'm going to have full pain all over my whole pain body? all over or finished? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pain, pain's um, gone. Like, but it was such that, a, that work out with such you? a cavalier attitude about. Yeah, yeah something that in the West was such a big concern for people, you know, such a big source of anxiety. Like I don't want to go anywhere and do anything in which I'm going to get injured. Cause then, you know, my material life will be severely compromised and I can't have that. So I, I basically have to live in a relative state of extreme caution and anxiety with regard to my body, you know? So to go into that, arena in which there seemed to be absolutely no concern, you know, like adjustments that I would have never, ever considered to make, you know, to have a, like a first time yoga student with obviously very, very stiff hips, and then just sit them down from the get go and to try to crank them with full strength into a full lotus position. It just seemed like what is that <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah so when i first went to so what was uh, the what India, was the i mean it just backtrack a second what what do you think the aim was then i mean i've asked many people this i think you know what what was his aim apart from we we don't want to think that it was actually actually to injure people or you know or just as an experiment his own little experiment or i mean you know what what did you i mean you know did, did you believe that there was some energetic thing going on there you know to to loosen up the fetters of attachment to the human body or some such um you know um yeah i don't know uh, why it was but like that environment just seemed to make sense to me like i just experienced a depth and an intensity and a focus and uh like a, a, a vitality that I'd never experienced anywhere else before, you know, it was like, for me, it was, you know, cause I, I oftentimes, uh, think of myself as like, a kind of, a, you know, like in the dog world, but you have like high energy breeds, you know, like shepherds <laughs> or Malinois and all, you know, these kind of dogs that are just like basically insane. They, they like, they have to, you have to exercise them. You have to train them like almost like full days every day. Otherwise, all that energy that they're born with can become destructive, basically. You know, they start biting people. 
barking at people, chewing up your house, you know, eating your shoes, like, you know, that kind of energy. And I think. So you just had that energy in you. you I was was born born with that kind of energy energy because of my ancestry, because of my culture, whatever. Right. And so like, do you think think that's lessened as you've got older? Has that, do you think, have you seen it more? peaceful side of yourself come out now you're past 60 you know living on a farm in in seattle or outside seattle or wherever you are well i think i think it i think in general i would say that i'm more in harmony with myself okay but i would i don't think i would say that the intensity has decreased okay it's still as as ever present as it ever was in in many ways you know, I've just learned to kind of surf uh, the waves a little bit more skillfully. That's all, you know. Uh-huh. But I think I think it's to... still, still the flow of energy is just intense. You know. Hmm. Go back and say about that adjustment again. Otherwise, we'll just mention it. But and yeah, not so talk about so it. so like yeah, when you first go to India, like first of all, the the like the the fearlessness of these adjustments the intensity the the strength of them like as soon like i've never like it i i I thought i had a relatively stiff back when i first went to india right i mean compared to a a lot of other practitioners but like from the get-go the first day that i'm there you know he's quite strongly and, and almost aggressively trying to pull my hands into my ankles and i was like Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, what is yeah. this all about? Like, and, you know, of course, I said to myself, I, well, this must be the way, you know, since he's doing it and everybody else is doing it. So I'll just go with it. And, um, you know, after about two weeks of doing that, um, you know, like I said, I, I at this point, I was uh, about 35, 36 years old. Um I had been having like severe lower back pain um, since I was around 1920. So for about 15 years, every single year, my back would go out in a fairly severe fashion fashion that would incapacitate me, right? And uh, that was just part of part of my life, you know. So here he is, like yanking my hands to my ankles, and then after about two weeks, I had I my back. Like it felt like I had ruptured several discs at once. My back went out more, more intensely than I'd ever experienced before. I mean, I could I couldn't walk straight. I couldn't sit down. All I could do was stand and lie down. You know, at that time, you 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 know, as you may know that that there were no Western style toilets there. They were all squat toilets. You know, squatting was not a possibility for me so i remember i would you know at that point i was in so much pain that i was afraid to eat because i didn't want to have to go to the toilet basically right so i that so i was fasting then as well you know and i i really was scared i was like oh my god i really did something to my back now that is going to have long-term consequences and that's when, you know, I go to Guruji and I'm like, maybe I should rest or maybe I should take time off. I can barely move. You know, I can barely sleep because I'm, I'm like in a state of anxiety and fear about what I'm going to have to confront, you know, because he didn't, there were no modifications. There were no like, okay, now you have back pain. Now I'm going to be more gentle with you. Like most of us do in our classes now, nowadays, you know, it was like, no, Full dropbacks, same level of force and aggression to try to gra- get my hands to grab my ankles. Like, it, like it was just seemed like it was insane, you know. And uh, but his response was like, "Don't worry, no problem. You one two weeks pain all over. No worry, don't worry. Pain coming, pain going. Don't worry." You know, don't in you know, and I don't know if you remember, but he forbid any of students using the word injury. He's like, no, don't say injury, only say opening. You had nice opening. Uh, whenever you have like, you know, you have a dislocated knee. Oh, nice opening. You have nice opening. 
just say open. <laughs> so, you know, being the crazy samurai spirit, I continued to go to practice, even though it was like, I could barely do anything. And it was like, you know, horrific amount of pain every single day. But then after three weeks of this, I wake up one morning and quite literally the pain is completely gone. So strange. And I thought, what am I in a dream or something? Like what, what mm, the hell mm. happened? And mm. um, not only did it, the pain was gone in that moment, but the back pain never reoccurred. So, so you strange. can imagine how that, that yeah. kind of experience makes you a believer. It's like, Whoa, maybe this yeah. guy really knows so, I what mean, he's uh, talking about. Yeah. So the obvious question then is, how does that affect your teaching then? I mean, are you pulling people? I mean, I'm sure you're not pulling people into the same kind of, you know, the same kind of degree of uh, severity, you know. Or, well, I, you know, I, would, I would. Coming probably, up to someone who said, I would probably got be, back pain, and, you know. Yeah, I'd probably be, uh, uh, you know, in jail. If in I jail, continue. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue to so, uh, try yeah, to so teach what the government, fashion. you know, I mean, so. If you're, if you're teaching, you know, not from a kind of Western kind of alignment, therapeutic, analytical perspective, how do you frame your teaching then when you're going up to someone to, to help them ostensibly with something? What are you trying to do? Or what are you, or are you really trying to facilitate with them? Or what well, are you trying to convey? I mean, for me, for me the, the practice is, you know, as Guruji was fond of saying, he said, yoga is not exercise. Yoga, this yoga is not exercise. And, uh, you know, I, I thought on that, that, that kind of phrase or that kind of mantra for many years. And I came to the conclusion that what he's saying is that this is not the focus, you know, cause an exercise, physical exercise, obviously your, most of your focus, a majority of your focus is on your physical body, right? So the purpose of physical exercise is either to enhance your body physically in some way, right? So you want to become more flexible, you want to get stronger, you want to maybe improve your balance. Um, or the purpose then is like maybe on the level of physical therapy where you're trying to heal some level of dysfunction or imbalance in your body. But in general, you're focused like on the body, right? This is why most teacher training programs have like a large segment is human anatomy basically you want to learn human anatomy you must learn human anatomy if you're going to you know teach yoga as a, a physical therapeutic practice right but like no what the way that gurusi's teaching is no this is actually in this is my understanding this is a form of meditation where it's not the focus is not the body now is the body involved is the body affected? Yes, of course, we're using the body. You're practicing quite intensely physically every day. So your body's going to change. But I always made a distinction between the benefit of the practice, right? You get a lot of physical benefit, but I made a distinction between don't confuse the benefit with the purpose of the practice. The purpose is not to enhance your body. The purpose is not to avoid injury. The purpose is not to like, you know, and also you, you see in a lot of the kind of modern style yoga class, it's just like an endless stream of analysis, intellectual analysis. Is the alignment correct? Are you putting yourself in danger of injury? You know, it's this constant moment by moment analysis, which to me goes against any kind of like focus on creating a meditative quality, right? So that's why it became very obvious to me in the Ashtanga method that it's all about like not, not analysis at all, basically. It's like we want to actually transcend the mind. We want to break our identification with the mind and the body, basically. Right? Mm. So you, see, so you see it as a kind of bona fide method of meditation, really, which yeah, is... Yeah, so that's why the vinyasa, yeah. for mm. me, the vinyasa mm. system is super precise system of breathing and moving. And I often compare that with, like, uh, learning to become a high-level musician, right? You get your piece of music, 
you have specific notes, you have specific spaces, you have pace and rhythm. And especially when you're learning the music, you don't deviate, you stay completely, you try to eliminate all the extra notes. You try to eliminate all the extra spaces, right? You become as pure, as focused, as efficient as possible. And that to me is what the vinyasa system is all about. You're so focused on precision and breath that you literally lose your, you're no longer directing your attention towards thoughts, towards the material plane. You're actually like directing your attention into a much more transcendental state, right? So that's for me was always, and also like drishti, mm. what is drishti? Like, it's not just looking at certain body parts while you're in the posture. It's actually a method of creating an inward looking kind of attitude, you know, energetically, mm. emotionally, mentally, like, can you develop an awareness in which you are aware moment to moment, which direction your attention is moving, right? And that's Does this why- kind of speak to does that not contradict this idea of meditation, of transcendence, of stopping thought? Does that not contradict your wish to experience everything in the world? Or how does it relate? One is, you know, because there's, you know, ample time where you talk about wanting to experience human life in all its fullestness. Right. And then you're talking about a method which is involving a kind of Patanjali in a way, kind of um, mental suicide, you know. Mm. Or, or lacking, you know, kind of, how do you square those two things? Well, or do they relate to each very, other? It became very clear to me early on that one of the greatest hindrances, one of the greatest obstacles to having full, direct, intense experience is your mind. So if you're not able to turn down the volume on your mind, then you're going to have difficulty having you know, really direct, intense, pure experience. Because what are you doing? You're going to be referencing your past experience, your thoughts, your beliefs, your expectations. And so you're not going to be as present as you could be. So in order to do that, you want to develop some kind of practice, some kind of ability to moderate, lack of a better way of saying it, the volume of your inner voice, the mental voice, basically, right? You mm. want to show up like, you know, I, I'm living right now with uh, the two young children, three, three years old and one and a half year old. And if you just observe them, you can see the intensity of their experience is, is due in fact for their lack of intellect right? Their lack of projection or pre-assumption. Yes, you know? exactly. And their lack of contextualizing themselves yeah. as an experience so amongst others. So they're just pure, you know, mm. 100%. That's, just... and that's really what, that's ultimately, I would say, has been my main attraction to yoga. Like, this is what it makes possible. You can return to think... the state of a three-year-old, basically. <laughs> I think, yeah, what I've got to find really kind of always strikes me about you is that your lack of, yeah, as I mentioned, your lack of kind of relating yourself or, or relating your experience to others' experience to make safe or to validate or to, or th you know, kind of consolidate your own experience of the world, right? And I mean, right. and, you know, as I tried to touch on earlier, I mean, I can't say that couldn't have been hard for you in your life to, to live as an individual must have been somewhat isolating in right. some ends. I mean, you well, know, we talked I, I, last I mean, it didn't, it didn't take me long to, begin don't... to realize that, that the more I tried to force myself into any kind of conventional life, any kind of normal life, you know, uh, that, that would fulfill the expectations of the collective sort of morality. Uh, that's when I suffered the most, basically. I would just like really go like really not feel good, you know? And when I just finally, finally just said, you know what, you're just this effing weirdo, basically, just be yourself, then that's when I, be, you know, develop more and more of a sense of peacefulness within myself. Yeah, and you found people that are kind of 
appreciate that right along right the way. of course of course one, one, ho- one hopes of one, course. <laughs> one hopes <laughs> no well, because yeah. i mean your methods yeah you know your inquiry low you know is, is on every level i mean you know i remember from the last time you're saying you don't you don't use any products on your on your body right i don't think you use any any soap or yeah any uh anything to brush your teeth with right um yeah you don't you don't take any any kind of medicines or believe particularly in in uh, health care right you don't have any health insurance or anything like that so right right i'd be you you're you're really living on a limb as it were you know um, <laughs> yeah, well aren't you i mean you're living on you know you know that's, immediately that, you know in, that's what in, i'm that's in, what i'm told but it seems like it seems so it's working sense. out it's worked out yeah right. <laughs> So, if, you know, people are really wanting to use yoga for a further inquiry and have the courage to be themselves. I mean, I, you know, I have a similar thing, you know, I mean, I play devil's advocate in a way because we're having a chat, you know, but I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. for me, it was, the, it was the wish for authenticity just trumps anything else. I mean, um, you know, the wish to be authentically one's own experience or to, you know, to, to come yeah. into that as, as truly as possible. Yeah. Uh, yes, it gives the courage to go against what anyone else is going to think or, or say about that, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the wish for truth, I suppose you could say, or, you know, this this yearning for something beyond is just simply the experience of comfort in the world, getting yourself right. in your little right. nest right. and your little whatever else around, which is understandable, you know, it's understandable. But, you know, certain people, you know, I think come into the world with, with, other, with other desires, you know. And, uh, of course, yeah, of so course. I do feel a kind of spirit in you. I mean, you know, but for people that don't feel so so confident in this and they're using yoga, you know, as, you know, understandably so for, you know, more pedestrian, you know, um, uses, right, to feel comfortable, to feel healthy, to feel, you know, I mean, but they, you know, they, they, you know inevitably all of us have another side. It's, n- it's never just one thing, you know. How, how would you suggest that they might bring in, you know, your, your kind of radical spirit of inquiry and intensity in a little bit into the into the into the full expression in their yoga practice you know hmm. well yeah, as know, as your I, student I, I, well, I imagine think, you're speaking to a student of yours i i think yeah. the there's uh there's great value uh more than a lot of people imagine in um in approaching especially these practices with you know full intensity you know just bringing all of yourself into the practice in each moment, you know, kind of um, consciously trying to create some sense of fearlessness, you know, kind of like feeling out where you might be anxious or afraid, and then actually developing the, the wherewithal to go to those places, you know, because it's sort of like um, the a life in which you are living, um, being ruled by fears, basically fundamental fears about you know whatever it may be, um, about you know relationship or or food or uh, even uh, kind of the life death dimension. Uh, it's you know, as they say, are you truly living your life or are you merely existing, right? Are you merely just getting by or are you, you know, really meeting life on its own terms, you know? There's just something that is, I I guess from a very young age, I just had a sense that, that there was something beyond the conventional, right? Something that was beyond those kind of borders that we create collectively about where we can and cannot go or where where we should and should not go you know we're we're like fed all kinds of sort of programming like don't cross that line you know don't cross that boundary um but in my experience there's just so much immense value personally and otherwise to at least walk up to the edge of those boundaries and have the courage to peer over them, you know, if not cross them altogether. You know, you can imagine, I always like make, think about like what it must've been like for the men who got onto their ships who were, you know, at the time when most people thought the world was flat, what happened 
with those men who got on those ships and sailed, you know, not only to the edge, what they thought was the edge, but they went beyond and they realized, oh, wow, what everyone thought was so true is actually not true at all, right? There's a certain sense of, I mean, you really I, liberate your mind and your spirit in a way that is very difficult to do in a, any other way. Yeah, I suppose what the only qualifying factor that comes to mind is inevitably, you know, those men that did that, they left families at home, you know, to do that, right? And they hurt sure, people sure. in order to do that. And in transgressing boundaries, inevitably, sure. one has to be willing to, uh, you know, to cause hurt and pain you know right that, right right sure 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 that, that, that i guess that's sure i mean i mean right? if you think about it like maybe what like a kind of psychic emotional death would be to betray your family basically you know to mm, abandon mm. abandon your family or to you know to do take action yeah, that... that create direct uh discomfort or or suffering for your family right mm. I mean, so yeah. On the, on the other hand, that's the first spiritual precedent, really, is that uh, you know to uh, to leave family, isn't it? You know, right, right. On the right. on the radical spiritual path, you know, Jesus would right. say, you know, like you know, and uh, and it said in in all you know literature is um right. you know you can't have you know you. I mean, your, I mean, we we life. we often we often talk about like what does it mean to be selfish or unselfish. Right. And it's it's a it's a, it's actually quite a profound conversation. Right. Because you would think, of course, on one level to be selfish is to do whatever you feel you need to do in spite of what other people think. Right. But on the other hand, like if you don't pursue that which drives you from a deeply passionate place, that also in a way could be seen as being selfish. Right, because you are basically um, denying yourself, and thus denying yourself, you're also denying the people that you're with. You know, certain again other possibilities, absolutely other possibility yeah. and other experience, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So, which one is actually more selfish or unselfish? And if you're honest with yourself, you say, like, well, actually, you're doing both at the same time, right? It just depends on the perspective that you're looking from. I think so that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's a great that's a great place that's a great place to finish the interview. I mean, I think it's a great quote from you. I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think it all does. It depends on the perspective you're looking from, and I think you know, I think you know what I really appreciate in your thinking is you look from all different perspectives, and you have the courage to do so, and um. Mm. Yeah, look, may it last for you. Um, right, well, we've done about an hour, so you. we'll probably, uh, yeah, you have to go off and teach now. And he's mm. teaching every day in a Seattle, Seattle, Washington, yes. I think. If you, My sir class. you fancy it, you fancy opening camp. your mind, yeah, yeah, open your mind and the rest will follow. Eshtanga Bellingham, Govinda Kai. Well, thanks for Govinda for coming on again. I really. I love just spending time in your presence, actually. So <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, I really enjoy talking with you. Well, actually, as long as it's by proxy, because remember, he doesn't use any soap or, or, or toothpaste or anything. So, you know, we have to keep a distance. <laughs> Don't smell. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right.